<laughs> Hello. So yeah, I'm talking about PyScript. And, um, so I, I'm trying to get a catchy title, so it's kind of like a clickbait. So with PyScript, we replace Django. So maybe a lot of people will be like really, you know, sparking their interest because I mentioned Django, which is a very popular um, uh, yeah, framework for web. So, um, but today I'm, I'm not going to talk too much about Django, but I'm mainly going to talk about PyScript. And I would have some crazy demo at the end, which is like very interesting demo, so you may not want to miss it, but the, the, most, the most important thing is that uh, this is the link to the slides. I should have used some QR code, but kind of lazy, so this is just the link that you could uh, you know, find the slide deck. It is also uploaded to the FOSDEM website. You can find it uh, to follow along if you can't see it very well or anything happened, then you can look at the slides. And all the links are there as well. So. Um, I hope that if, since you're here, you have heard of PyScript, but who, like how much do you know about PyScript? Like, except that it's something to do with Python. <laughs> so, yeah, silence. So, um, yeah. So, I think uh, most people that I met, I've talked about PyScript, and then they said that they have heard about PyScript. They may have read a blog or two about PyScript. Uh, it's something that's relatively new, so that's why I think it's, important to kind of, um, you know, to put information together so people have something to, you know, look at when they want to know more about PyScript. So, by the way, I'm Chuck. Uh, why am I talking about PyScript? Why I so sounds like I know a lot about PyScript? Because I work in Alaconda. So, uh, PyScript is developed by a team in Alaconda. So, I work with them a lot. So, uh, I have, you know, kind of, you know, very close to the source. So, I kind of have some, like, information about what's the newest thing about PyScript. And I love open source project. I have been involved in open source project in the past. I just want to put more pictures there, so that's why I put it here. Um, <laughs> and um, I organize a lot of events. So um, let's jump into it. What is PyScript? Um, PyScript is uh, actually a framework. Some people think that PyScript is a, a new um, language, but it's not. It's actually Python, but this, you know, you can write Python in your HTML file. That's what it is. Uh, and also, like, it's or it's a framework. Uh, why? Because later you'll see why. Like, we say PySquare is a framework because of how you can change the backend and other stuff. So, uh, it lets you run Python application in the browser. Basically, it just means that you can, well, uh, you can run, you know, you can write Python script as just like you run, like you, you write JavaScript in the HTML file. And then the browser would understand what you want it to do and then would do something. So, uh, but it's not trying to replace JavaScript. Uh, you can actually use it with JavaScript. For example, I'm using it with uh, the D3 library, which is crazy. Um, who, who knows about D3? Yes, okay, good. Okay, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna, like speaking to other people. But yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, so, uh, I will show some demo at, like, later. So basically, you can actually pass the uh, objects back and forth. So you can change a Python object into JavaScript object, and then your JavaScript library, like D3, will understand it, um, or the other way around. So it is something that is uh, quite new. Uh, so also, um, so all these things that I talk about that you can like change the Python object into JavaScript object, all this stuff won't be happening um, if we don't have the PyRDI project, which uh, they is. By the way, for those of you who haven't heard, it's kind of, it started as a um, Monsilla's project called IODI. They try to like have a lot of things that is like run, you know, uh, in, as a WASM, web assembly, so the browser can run it. Um, and then there's a, uh, so, so within that, all those projects, there's a Python, um, you know, project that is actually like converting Python uh, into web assembly. So that's the PyODI project. Um, so, that's actually allow you to uh, run the, the, run the run Python. So uh, without it, like actually PyScript won't work. Um, so, um, well, PyScript will still work. You can change the backend, but like we started with PyODI. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like kind of, uh, I'm trying to be correct in what I'm saying. Um, but the main thing is that uh, you need to kind of uh, compile Python into a um, web assembly. So PyODI is like the, 
the stand the kind of one of the most popular one that is like a, having the whole uh, more or less the the, the whole thing that uh, your standard Python offer is actually compiled into WebAssembly, so you can run Python on the browser. But there's also other things that we are trying. The team is trying now. For example, they are trying to compile MicroPython, which is a lighter version of Python, into WebAssembly. So it more or less work the same, uh, but you have some kind of uh, Python functionality that is not available on MicroPython. So uh, you can actually choose which one you want to use. Um, and also because uh, one, one thing about the PyDive project that is, uh, that is why, it, why it is the first one that PyScript adopts and why is the first one that is like why is it so popular? Because the project itself also provides a lot of um, Python packages. For example, those that uh, we use a lot, for example, um, uh, NumPy, like scientists and data scientists use a lot, it's like, uh, for example, NumPy, SciPy, Scikit-learn, all those actually are quite difficult to, um, to run on a browser because they are not pure Python. So for pure Python, if you have a Python interpreter that actually uh, is compiled into Wasm, of course you can do it because they are just Python. But something like NumPy, SciPy, Scikit-learn, they are not pure Python. Then it's a bit tricky. But Py, PyDive project also provide that. So now we can also run those very complicated Python packages on the browser, which is cool. So uh, I, would, I would show you a little bit of the PyScript basic, and then I'll show you the demo, and then like all the questions will come at the end. Uh, is it too small? <laughs> I don't know how to zoom in though. That's why the link is important at the beginning. <laughs> um, so I, I can explain, but it, it, the, the content of this, this code is not the most important thing. I, it's just like how a typical um, PyScript will, will look like. So I'm just talking about this section here. So for the first two lines here, you, you don't need to see it, but I'm telling you what it is. It's just like when you have a, a JavaScript code, you would actually have a Probably you have a CSS, which is like the, the style of how your website will look like, the style sheet. And then you have a JavaScript that you kind of pull it in, and then you can run all these like JavaScript functions that you have. Um, so this is actually something like a, a, PyScript, a path to a PyScript JS that's hosted on the PyScript.net. This is actually what allows uh, you to write Python on the, on the website, uh, on your HTML file. Uh, is, well, you, you may ask, like, why is it .js? This is just how Wasm works, so we have to follow the standard. Um, so yeah, that's, that's .js, but that's not important. You are not writing JavaScript, so don't worry about it. Um, next is there is a section that you can actually write Python code. So here is just some NumPy code that is plotting some num, NumPy random numbers. Okay. Um, so here, uh, for like if it's, sorry, I, I'm not expecting the room to be this big. So if you can see it, um, so the first line is uh, basically a HTML um, tag, and it's PyScript, and then it also have a little bit of settings, like output equals to plot and stuff like that. And then inside, just a Python script. It's just like import, num, uh, import NumPy, input MapleLib and all that stuff. And then it's, you know, it's, it's Python code. It's just like, you know, you can copy and paste your Python code there. It's more or less the same thing. And the other thing that you may have when you are using PyScript is a PyConfig file. So this PyConfig file is actually, um, there's multiple format that is supported. Uh, in this example, it's in JSON format, it's just a JSON file with like saying packages is uh, NumPy and MapPolyp because we are using it in the code, in the Python code. That's why we have to like put it there to say that we are using those packages. Kind of like a pip install. So it, it's like put, putting it in your, um, in, in the environment within your browser, so that's, that's what it does. So uh, this is the code, that's typically how it looks like. Uh, one catch is that it's using the latest version uh, in the first two lines there. So if you don't want to you know, break your code, uh, you can pin a version, now you can also pin a specific version uh, with the uh, releases and then the, 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 uh, the version number. Now we are named, we are, we are, we are uh, tagging it as like the year, month, days, um, year, month probably, and then the, the versions. So, um, so yeah, you, if you, for example, you don't want it to, because now PyScript is still changing a lot. So if you don't want your code to be not working next month, <laughs> so you may want to pin the version until you want to update it manually when you look at the code again and update it. 
So you can do it, so don't worry about it. I know people will have questions about it. Um, or uh, you, you may think that, oh, like, you know, you're a web developer and like you, you don't like the CDN like calling in from another website that you have no control of. You know, if that website got attacked or something, then it won't work. It may be very dangerous. You can host it yourself. You can download that two things, you know, the, the, the style sheet and the JavaScript code yourself. And, you know, and, and the other things with it as well, there's, there's also a few other things. But they're all downloadable. You can download it and host it yourself if you want to. <laughs> so uh, it's getting more complicated because, you know, now we're, like, the PyScript is getting, like, more developed. And now there's more things you can config about how PyScript works. So the, Py, uh, the PyConfig tag is where you can change all those. So first of all, the, the tag itself. So with, within inside, there's multiple format you can use. Um, there's the TOML format, which is the default. So if you don't tell this tag what format you're writing, so it will just assume you're using a TOML format. Um, so in this demo here, it says like packages and, and parts. So it's just like, you know, what package you are putting in, just like, again, like the pip install thing, you have to, uh, there's an environment within the browser that's running the, all the PyScript code, so you have to first say what packages you are using, so uh, to allow it to be usable. Um, the JSON format, again, it's just different format, it's more or less the same thing. Or you can actually have another source, you can write your file in another, for example, either, either JSON file or TOML file, you can also put it in, because, uh, well, you don't want everything to be in your HTML file, right? So you can actually uh, put in other sources as well. And also, um, yeah, the, the PyConfig tag is, uh, is not just used for uh, putting all your packages and other stuff. There's also other things that you could, uh, you could set in a PyConfig tag. Um, so, you know, you can also host the wheel of the, of the package. It doesn't need to be using the one that's provided by PyODI. Um, you can also, if you have your, like for example in Python, you can actually import your local script as well. You can also do that. Uh, you, can, uh, you can do it by the fetch tag, uh, but uh, I'm not showing it here. You can, if you're interested, you can look at the documentation of a PyScript. It will show you how to use the fetch tag to actually load in uh, your other Python script. You can do it as well. Um, you can change the runtime setting, like I said before, because uh, PyODI is the default one at the, when we first started having PyScript. Now, uh, is, is, I think it's like in development that like, you can actually change the backend, like which runtime you want to use. You, if you, like, for example, just want to do some demonstration with Python or you are t using it as a tool to teach uh, kids how to code, and this, you may not want to use PyODI because it's slow, it's heavy, it's like, powerful, and it's useful useful for other things. You can use MicroPython, which takes no time to load, um, but it provides some, all the basic Python um, code that you could write uh, in the HTML file. So you can quickly teach someone Python without installing Python and just like running, running it on the HTML file. Um, you can also add some metadata. For example, you, know, you want to add the author who write the script and the license. You can also do that, no problem. So. Uh, another thing that uh, you may put in your HTML file while you are using PyScript is the PyRepo. Uh, it's something that's just like Jupyter Notebook. If you have used Jupyter Notebook, you know, it's like very nice um, repo that you can like put in the Python code, shift enter, and then it will execute and give you the result. Um, you can also Im embed that in your uh, HTML page as when you are using PyScript. So, you just need to do the same thing, you know, uh, having those two lines of the style sheet and the um, PyScript.js. And then you can just put the PyRepo tag and then you will have a Jupyter-like repo that you could use in your site. So why is it so useful, right? Like, uh, it's a new thing, it's exciting, but can I really use it? Um, or is it just a fun thing to do? Um, why doing it on the front end, right? Like, now you can have like application like Django, like I said, it's a kind of people love Django and like I, you know, uh, why do we want PyScript? Um, because sometimes like things just need to be run on the front end. Sometimes like we can't really um, rely on a, you know, uh, an application like Django or other Python application to handle all this Python code. Um, for example, if you, you, you 
don't want to use up all your resources, right? Like if you have a backend and then the backend is actually hosted by you or the, the cloud service that you pay for, if there's a lot of user and like the, if, if every single user had a very like um, heavy use of your resources, then the bills can be expensive and then you may not want that. You want to maybe, um, you know, give, give back the low into the, the users who is using it, right? So you, you, could, you could maybe push things into the front end. Um, on, or if uh, I've heard like maintainers said that like they may want people to try out their code, you know, you can build a sandbox that let people to, um, to run it. Like for example, a lot of um, the data science stuff, you know, uh, for example, the NumPy, SciPy, they, they would have, before they would have the binder thing that actually load in, you know, another application, you know, that have the, have the backend and then they could run some code there to do it as, as an example. But for these services, uh, they are provided, if they are provided for free, usually they are quite slow or, you know, they have limits. So um, if you want to provide a, uh, a sandbox for, for users, if it can run on their machine, you don't have to worry about people abusing it as well. Like, for example, some people, if you, whoever run whatever on your sandbox, they could do crypto mining and then it's not a good thing. <laughs> so if it's on the front end, it's, it's using the user's resources, not your resources. Which, if they want to mine Bitcoin, it's fine. It's on their machine, not on your machine. You don't have to pay the bill. Um, also, uh, sometimes uh, we have applications that, for example, is some uh, research data, some medical data, very sensitive. Uh, so you, you can't really, you know, the, it's like the rules that you, the, the, the data can't leave the machine. So you can send it to a backend somewhere to do it. Then, you know, um, maybe you can provide the app, you know, pro provide the code that, um, you know, someone can use it to run on the browser, so it's run on their machine. So instead of, you know, you have you have build the application and they have to send the data over to your app, or whatever the backend is, and then uh, to run the application. So it's also easier to set up as well. Otherwise, you may have to provide a separate secure environment with the whole kind of uh, setup of the backend and the front end together and stuff. You know, uh, if you just have the front end, it's much easier. You don't have to worry about it. So, uh, with PyScript, we face Django. I know that you already know the answer is no, but uh, actually it's very fun if you use them together. Um, I will show you a few things that, I, like, uh, that is uh, done by either me or some of my friends. That's actually quite cool <laughs> things that we have used, like both Django and PyScript. So, uh, for example, this is uh, what I have done with, um, can I just, yeah, okay. <laughs> so this is something that I've done. It's like uh, using PyScript with, uh, with Django. That I've, so this is what, I, I will show you what it is first and then I will explain. So here, this is the thing. I think this one, this one I can zoom in, cool. So this is a recommender system, right? So I have all this movie that I download from the movie data set on uh, Cargo and then um, is there, there are a bunch of ratings. So. This recommender, if you put in a movie that you like, if you try to find all the potential movie that you like after, for example, I always like putting Iron Man because I know it works. <laughs> and then give me five recommendations. If I like Iron Man, what else would you recommend me? And then if I click recommend, and I've got uh, five of them, right? So most of them sci-fi uh, sci -fi movie, which is quite cool. Um, there's also The Dark Knight, which is I think it's the, the movie about the Batman, which is also, I like it. Um, so yeah, that, that's nice. Um, so, but this thing, right, this thing, usually you think of, oh, it's like a machine learning thing, right? It's a, uh, it's a recommend, recommend the system. You know, can I run it on the front end? Yes, you can, as long as you have or your model already trained. Then, um, for example, uh, in my example here, actually you have a link to see the, the uh, the, how it's set up. Oh. If you click on this link, uh, it will show you how I set it up. So you can play around it yourself as well. So um, what I did is just like, I, of course I download the data, that's a given, you have to have the data to make it work, right? Um, and then after that, you just, uh, you know, run, run some of the script. You can actually do, do it in a more beautiful way. I'm just using some command line to run all this script to load in the data, to, uh, to train your model and stuff. You can do it with 
other ways. For, for example, you have a user, uh, a mean user interface, right? They upload a new data and other stuff. Then uh, it will automatically retrain the model when there's new data. You can set that up as well, but it's just a demo, so this is like this. But after that, there will be a model that's already um, trained. It will deploy to the front end. And then in the front end, that's how these come in. That's like, that's how it works. So this is just a trained model. Uh, it's very lightweight. Um, and then you don't have to host all the data. It could be done somewhere else. But uh, for the user, they, you know, they have a trained model and then they just need to put in the, the input and then it will give you some results. So it's a machine learning model deployed on the front end. Another thing that my friend has done, which is quite cool, is front end as a back end. So it's, it's running Django on the browser. So <laughs> yes. So this is, <laughs> so, yeah, oh, this is so small. But yeah, someone has done it. Um, this is not my doing, so I, I, I don't like, uh, you know, I don't admit responsibility. But, you know, have a look. So this is actually like, you have, so you have two, basically you have two browsers, you have two uh, browser, like HTML page. One page is the server, one page is the front end. So this is what it is. So you have a back end and a front end on the same page, yay. Um, <laughs> So yeah, you can do that. So I, I was like, oh, this is a bit fun, but is it useful? But my friend here, Hugo, told me that you can actually use it to test things because you now can run an application on the browser. So everybody has a browser, so you can, you can run an application on it, which is very cool. So um, yeah, check that out. <laughs> um, other things that I use PySquare for is not uh, with Django, it's uh, with uh, other things, for example, use it together with D3. I have this example here, I already preload them because I, I'm not going to like fool you, it's actually take quite a while to load, so that's why I preload them. <laughs> um, but yeah, but because I'm using the whole kind of package, right? Here I'm using Network X, I have put in a network graph, I have all this network analysis, which is super cool, but you know, I don't like the Network X uh, visualization because it's kind of basic. So that's why I use D3 for the visualization. I can do this, right? Very good animation. I can click on things and things change. You know, now I see all, all the neighbors are colored coded. Um, so yeah, like uh, you can combine the cool stuff that JavaScript provide, for example, D3, and the cool stuff that Python provide, which is all these like data science stuff, which is cool. Um, also, there are other plots as, as well. You know, um, before you know is. You know, you, know you, you can't have these interactive um, things that you could, you know, interactive graph done easily on your website. Um, so yeah, and also a map as well. This is not, again, not my demo, but you know, you can now have this map thingy where you can use Folium, which is a, again, Python library. Now you can use it on the browser, super cool. Um, yeah, and also I have actually a start building a PyScript tutorial. Again, this is work in progress because things keep changing. I can't keep it up, but um, if you're interested, if you want to try it, that may be a place you want to have a look at. Um, so yeah, all of these slides, again, this is on the slide, so uh, yeah. So download my slides if you need to. Um, so uh, I think I don't, don't have too much um, time left. I would, uh, I would like to answer your questions, but there are these common questions that I would also ask and answer myself. So, for example, people ask me, can you pull in a Python script? Yes, you can. You can use the fetch now. Look at the documentation if you want to. Um, what Python version you're using, it depends on the runtime, which is the, again, PyConfig settings that you could, um, you know, uh, that you can look at it and see which one you want to use. You know, PyLDI version, which version you want to use. You can choose it yourself. And, uh, you know, why we can't do it like JavaScript, having script tag equals to Python. Because uh, this is so new, all the uh, browsers, they don't support it yet, so we have to make a custom tag, which is py script. Um, okay, uh, why don't you just use PyODI? I think PyScript is just easier to use. PyODI is very nice, um, but you know, uh, sometimes get quite complicated for beginners especially. Um, also, you can change the runtime with PyScript, so it's not just PyLDI, you can, again, you know, there's, uh, uh, my colleague is now working on a compiled version of MycoPython, it will be much faster and much, much more lightweight, so try that. Um, a bunch more other things, so uh, can you pin a version uh, of, the of the packages that you use? If you want, well, if you want, then you better host the wheel yourself, then you know which version you're using, and it's there, uh, frozen, and changed forever. Um, so also some, do you know Brighton? 
maybe some of you have heard about Python. So Python is a project that tries to uh, tr translate Python into JavaScript and then run it in the browser. Um, the difference is that PyScript actually is not using JavaScript. It's actually using Wasm. So uh, Python is compiled to Wasm, so uh, it's more packages is available. Um, so yeah, also you can, again, change the runtime, the backend, which one you want to use. Uh, beware, uh, someone mentioned beware in my previous talk. Uh, so yes, I would, love to <laughs> I would love to see more support for beware, but uh, I can't say for the company, so I'm not saying that. Um, yeah, so uh, that's the end of my talk. I know I have a few minutes left for Q&A, so, or if you didn't get the sticker at the beginning, come to talk to me, I'll give you a sticker. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we have a few minutes for questions. And uh, before the questions, I want to thank everyone for joining the Python Dev Room. And I want to thank also Eric Gazzoni, uh, my friend who organized uh, all of the planning of the day and um, everything upstream. Um, and he made a great work for the, yeah, all the selection of the speakers, the planning, everything. He couldn't make it here today. But um, I really want to, to thank him as well. Thanks, everybody. And thanks to Arnaud also for joining me today uh, to help the dev room. Uh, questions? Yeah. I think he was first. Hi. Uh, thank you for the wonderful talk. Uh, PyScript is uh, very exciting. Uh, I know people are using WebAssembly to run untrusted code in the browser. You can use it like a sandbox. So this uh, is very exciting. But my question is, so you were importing packages. W is that easy to do? Do the packages have to be on the machine already? Yeah, so uh, if you have internet connection, so the uh, package, if you just simply put in, like, you know, in the PyConfig, you put in package equals to something, so those will be actually pulled from whatever PyRD is provided. So it needs to be loaded from online, so you'll see if you have a web page, it will take quite a while to load. But you also have an alternative that you can download the will of the package as long as that will is purely written in Python. So something like uh, NumPy, SciPy, those, because they have extension, they're not purely written in Python, those you don't have an option. You have to use the one that Python I provided. But otherwise, if it's in other library, for example, Fuzzy Wuzzy, you know, it's purely written in Python. You can download the wheel and it can run locally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, my question is about uh, Matplotlib is okay, but um, how is this base map or Cartopy? Can it be used also? Uh, Matplotlib, sorry. <laughs> Matplotlib uh, is uh, for graphics, but if you have cards, maps, base map, can yeah. such a tool also be used then in the browser? Yeah, most of the library that if it's available in Python, it will also be available. So it must be pure Python, or it's. Uh, if oh, Maplelib. I uh, I'm not sure Maplelib is pure Python. Um, I I don't know Maplelib enough okay. to answer the question. <laughs> I try. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. So you have you have to check uh, like yeah. the library that you want to import. Is it purely in Python or not? So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm a bit confused because uh, the, what we loaded in the browser is a JavaScript module. So is there some WebAssembly somewhere? Yeah, so you see the script that was import is .js, right? But actually that's a, a WebAssembly. It's just that the standard, the WebAssembly standard is like uh, when my team provided, like when they um, released the thing, which is in WebAssembly, but it's the extension is .js. It's a bit confusing, but actually it's in WebAssembly. It's not in JavaScript. It's just how the WebAssembly kind of standard work. You, you have a JS file somehow after you have uh, really, you know, done the release, yeah, the build and the source. It become .js. <laughs> we have time for one more question, if you have one. Yeah, there. Yeah. Thanks for your talk. Um, does PyScript use any web workers? And if so, how do, can you control them? There's the web, sorry? Oh, does PyScript use any web workers? Web like, workers? Does your code run parallel? It's purely in the browser. So um, if you host everything locally, actually it's, it's, it's just on the browser. So there's no web worker that communicate with other applications. No. Yeah. 
yes, yes. One tiny question. Uh, yeah. How does it, does it okay with different browsers, so Firefox, Chrome? Because I guess it depends on you, your browser supporting yeah. that. Now, definitely work on Chrome, uh, Firefox maybe, others I can't guarantee. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it's very young, the project, so later it will be more support.